Hi, I'm Nick O'Leary from the Node-RED project, here with the release notes for the 2.1 release. The first time you open the editor with 2.1, you'll be greeted with a new welcome tour. This will highlight a lot of the new features in this version of Node-RED. The tour will only be shown the very first time you open a particular version, and you can opt out of seeing it in the future in your user settings. If you embed Node-RED in your own application, and you don't want your end users to see this welcome tour, you can also disable it via the runtime settings file. The underlying framework for creating the welcome tour is a reusable component that could be used to create other sorts of interactive tours, tutorials, or user guides. And we will hopefully have more of this in this area in the future. We often hear from users who have a lot of flows. To make it a bit easier to manage, you can now hide the flow tabs in the editor. The info sidebar will still list all of them, and it indicates which are currently hidden, and it also allows them to be shown with a single click. There's a new tab menu that provides more options around managing your tabs. For this first release of the feature, the hidden state of a tab is stored in user preferences within the editor. It's not a property of the flow itself. This means you can't share a set of flows with another user and that have some tabs pre-hidden. Now, this is an open point of discussion as to whether we want to allow that behavior in the future, so stay tuned on that. And whilst talking about managing the tabs, you can now shift click on the workspace tab bar on the scroll arrows to jump immediately all the way to the start or the end of the tab list. The MQTT nodes get a major new feature in this release with the ability to dynamically control their connection. When enabled, the MQTT in node gets an input so you can pass it messages. Those messages can be used to connect or disconnect from the broker, as well as to subscribe or unsubscribe from topics dynamically. And the MQTT out node also supports the connect and disconnect messages. To go alongside this, the MQTT Broker Configuration node has a new option as to whether it should automatically connect or not. If you disable that option, it won't connect until one of its flow nodes receives a connect message. Check the release blog for links on how to format those messages and how to control the nodes dynamically. We used the typed input widget throughout a lot of the core nodes in Node-RED. To make it life a bit easier, it now offers autocomplete when typing in message property names. For now, it offers completions based on a list of well-known properties that the core nodes use. In the future, it will be possible for contributed nodes to register the properties that they use so they can be offered as completions as well. We're also thinking about how best to apply this autocomplete functionality to the flow and global context inputs, autocompleting based on the current contents of context. Again, stay tuned for more updates on this. The new link call node can be used alongside the link in and out nodes to create subroutine like flows. If you have a flow that starts with a link in node and ends with a link out node that's been put into its new return mode, the link call node can be used to pass that flow a message and the result is passed back to the calling link call node. As an alternative to using subflows, this is great for creating little utility flows that you want to reuse in multiple places. The main menu now has an edit and arrange submenu. The edit menu has all the actions you'd expect, undo, redo, copy and paste. And the arrange menu adds some new tools to help arrange your nodes in the workspace, aligning them, distributing, things like that. And all menus in the editor now will show keyboard shortcuts that have been set for the corresponding actions. We've supported setting properties in subflows that get exposed as environment variables for a while now. And with this release, we've extended this functionality to flows and groups. So it provides you more flexibility in how you can create flows with share configuration across them. The debug sidebar options have had some rework done. The filter options are now a drop down menu of options rather than its sliding panel we had before. And the clear messages button it now has a drop down that lets you change its behavior just to clear the filtered messages instead. That option is useful if, for example, you have the current flow filter enabled and you want to clear the message for the current flow without clearing other messages that are accumulating in the debug sidebar from other flows. In other good news, both of these options are now stored in editor settings, so they get remembered between reloads of the editor. 
The change nodes set action has a new option to create a deep copy of the value when copying from message, flow or global context. In the case of dealing with objects and arrays, this creates a proper clone of the value rather than creating a reference to the same object, which can cause unexpected behaviours. We've also updated the label of the set action to hopefully help users get the from and to fields the right way round. When in rate limiting mode, the delay node now has a new option to send rate limited messages to an optional second output of the node. This is useful if you need to rate limit messages and do further processing for messages that have been rate limited, rather than just have them discarded. For example, if you're creating a rate limited HTTP endpoint, you still want to be able to respond to the rate limited messages rather than just letting them time out. With the join node, if it has a timeout running and it receives a message with message.restart timeout set, it will restart the timeout, giving you more flexibility in how the node accumulates its messages. The TCP request node can now be configured to return strings rather than raw buffers, and this matches the functionality that was already available with the TCP in node. And finally, the file and file in nodes have new palette labels to make it clearer which writes to files and which reads to files, something I still routinely would mix up when I was trying to create flows with them. And one last thing, whilst not really part of the release as such, we've also published lots of updates to the API documentation on the website. This includes the the recently added hooks APIs, the library store APIs in the runtime, as well as more of the APIs available to nodes and plugins to extend the user interface of the editor, and how to create custom editor themes, for example. Check the release blog post for links. Now this release has got us back on our schedule for the release plan, with the next planned release being 2.2 for the end of January. We have a few features already in development for that release, including tooling to help package subflows as NPM modules directly from the editor. And as ever, if there are any particular features you're interested in seeing in the future or want to contribute to, now's a great time to jump into the forum or the Slack to share your feedback. And that's everything I've got for you today. Until next time, goodbye.